So today I'm going to give you all my honest review of Steel Rising after having recently finished the game. Now this is a game developer that I knew nothing about going in. I have heard things about Greedfall and I did want to play it but I never actually got around to playing it. So when I did buy Steel Rising I didn't know what to expect at all. All I knew pretty much is that it was a Souls-like with robots and friends, which I'm sure that's a lot of what people actually know about the game. Now, the first category we're going to look at is the price versus the content that we get. It took me 18.3 hours to complete the game, and I did all the side quests I could find. But this game is at actually full price. It costs $56 Canadian, so probably around 40 US dollars, and usually in Canada games, full games, cost $80 without tax. So I think the price point for the content you get is fair in my opinion, but I did see a lot of backlash for that game because of its price, but you might have a different opinion on this altogether. Let's talk about the story. I think it was really good that there's some like detective elements to the game that I really love in games and in anything really any in any media. But there's no mechanic connected to it apart from picking up items that are like literally glowing. So that was a bit underwhelming, but I did enjoy the overall narrative and the conclusion to the story, which has got some really good commentary on people who think they can play God and eventually they just end up causing more harm than good and their starting goal was to do good to begin with. But overall, it's a really imaginative take on the French Revolution. I just don't think it was able to actually make me feel connected to characters in the way that most RPGs can do. But that's just my personal take. Some people might really love like Marie Antoinette for example and the emotional story beats might have worked for them, but to me they fell flat. And if we compare it to a Souls game, it definitely has more of a RPG-like story structure uh, with various cutscenes, character interactions and dialogue, and you're also presented with certain choices throughout the story. So it was definitely a combination of both uh, RPG elements and Souls-like elements to make a pretty good story in my opinion. Now for the gameplay, I think it's one of the strongest points of the game, but it also can be one of its weaker points. The weapons are really unique and there's some awesome abilities that go with them, like your uh, war fans that turn into a shield, but in a way there is a lack of diversity with the movesets. So you have like running, jumping, dodging and light attacks, but the heavy attacks don't have a combo and you can't combo from heavy to light and light to heavy. So it limits what you can do in a way and it just makes the fighting a bit stale if you use the same weapon during an entire playthrough. There are the usual Souls-like mechanics in this game, like losing XP when you die, um, healing potions you can upgrade, stats to make a build fit for the weapon or fighting style that you want to use, and that will be very familiar to anyone who's ever played any RPG or Souls games. And there's nothing particularly innovative about this system, though in this game they do give you more movement compared to the usual FromSoft title, like air dodges, a hook to grip yourself on higher points on the map, and an ability to destroy certain fragile walls. And at first it feels like the exploring is limited because a lot of these things are in the starting areas of the game, but you don't have these tools yet. So you have to remember to come back to those places. I think it's a bit counterintuitive to what's usually in RPGs, like breakable walls will only be in areas after you gain the ability. But this game also has a few fetch and come back quests, so I guess that also was their reasoning for putting that in. They want us to go back to areas and explore places we've already been in. I just think it's a bit of a time waster in my opinion. But I will definitely give credit where credit is due. The interesting thing about these abilities is that you can actually use them in combat to afflict enemies with certain types of damages, which can give you a bit more diversity while fighting. Moving on to enemies and bosses. Now this is one of the most important parts of a Souls game, next to the gameplay. But enemies and bosses are one of the challenges we look forward to the most. Learning attack patterns, knowing how to dodge it, managing resources during certain fights. And although I have seen critics of the game saying there aren't enough different enemies, I think for the size of Steel Rising specifically, they did a great job with enemy diversity. And there are some really interesting ones. And very frustrating enemies to fight against. Like the Wrecking Ball robots or the Trumpet robots, which it just get on my nerves so much. And it's the same for bosses. A lot of them have very interesting visuals. But my actual issue with enemies and bosses in this game is with the AI itself. And 
enemies are far more aggro than bosses most of the time, but they are also very stupid in the way they will just stand there and not attack you. And if you compare it to most Souls games, enemies are extremely relentless. Just think back to the Crucible Knights in Elden Ring. The second you start to heal, they will charge at you. But in a way, regular enemies are way harder than 95% of the bosses in this game. The only somewhat challenging bosses were the Executioner and the Iron Queen, which is the final boss. I don't think the fight designs are the issue, it's really just that they aren't aggro enough, they don't really make you fear for your life at all. And not to mention, the arenas are all exactly the same, it's just a giant square and it's always empty. So this game is very much a Bloodborne-like, more than a Souls-like. It's clear that this developer really loves Bloodborne, as it's sort of a love letter to that game in a way, where they also expand on some of the ideas that the game had. For example, uh, do you guys remember when you had to take that carriage to carry in a manor in Bloodborne? In this game, your mode of traveling to certain areas is a carriage. And now it might be a stretch, it might not be, but I just think it was a bit of a nod to Bloodborne. And you can also talk to strangers who are inside their houses from the streets, much like how all quests in Bloodborne are started. And yes, some people will have quests for you in Steel Rising, but most of them actually will give you hints on how to fight certain enemies and bosses, which I think is an interesting mechanic. It's less obvious than some other games do when it comes to boss weaknesses, and if you miss it, then you just don't get that info at all. So it really rewards player curiosity, and I think that's a good thing in a game. Now I didn't talk about the atmosphere or the map design yet, because I think it fits in the Bloodborne-like category. And I really love the areas you can explore. You can find shortcuts, and there's gears to be found, and the atmosphere does definitely match Bloodborne's in a way. However, it's sort of too similar throughout, where Bloodborne had different areas all being distinctively unique. And I know it might not be fair, you know, trying to compare this much smaller game to a game that's considered one of the best PlayStation exclusives. But if you're going to make a Souls-like and especially model it closely to Bloodborne, like you have to expect it. But I do think, however, that Steel Rising is a beautiful game. It has some really visually appealing areas, this old style of buildings that was present in the 1700s, and it's and lots of gold and inlays, and it's just very regal, you know, it feels regal. But the problem is it's more of the same throughout the entire game. Now let's talk about bugs and performance. I'm not going to hide the fact that the first week of the game on PC was pretty rough. I couldn't even play it on Ultra settings with my Ryzen 7 and my GTX 3070 because the temperatures were shooting up past 70 degrees which is ridiculous for a game that isn't that graphically demanding. It's much better now but it still has some stability issues and I also found that my character would often get stuck on rubble or just random garbage on the floor and that was really annoying when trying to explore or just travel from place to place. And sometimes when using certain abilities like the air dash, she would go back to the slow walking afterwards and it would take a few click of the sprinting button to get her to actually sprint again, which was really annoying when trying to run away from a horde of enemies. Other than that, I never had a serious crash or anything game breaking, so I can't really say I've had like big issues or a bad experience with the game. I want to finish off by talking about the content and DLC. I know it may feel like I was ripping this game apart, but I really did enjoy my playthrough. And what makes me most excited is the fact that they seem to be adding lots of content to it and there's also the possibility of future DLCs. For example, they recently added New Game Plus with new items you can acquire during that playthrough. So there is a lot to look forward to with this game, especially if they make the AI a bit more aggressive and smarter. I think it can become a really amazing Souls-like. Not to mention mods, of course, which you all know I love. My verdict is I would recommend this game even if people don't like Souls games or just like RPGs, I would definitely recommend this game. But I think my honesty with this review will not make you expect more than what the game can actually offer. So overall, I would give it a solid 7 out of 10. So that's all I had to say about that game. Let me know your own thoughts in the comments down below. I'm really curious to see if you guys tried it and if you liked it or not, and how you think it holds up compared to other Souls games or other Souls-like titles. I have plenty of gaming guides on my channel if you're interested. I also have a Discord if you're looking for a friendly server to join. But other than that, everyone, have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll see you all very soon.